incredible, balanced, committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. There's a new trend that's placing additional pressure on the National Housing Corporation. It was identified by Prime Minister Frundle Stewart, who was speaking during debate on the vesting of close to 6,000 square meters of land in St. Peter in the NHC. Prime Minister Stewart says more mothers are now asking their daughters who have children of their own to move out of their homes. That has created uh, additional pressure because then these young mothers, along with their children, have to be housed somewhere and the place to which they, in, they invariably turn uh, is the National Housing Corporation. And all of this is happening in the context of a, a scarcity of financial resources to meet the demand. Prime Minister Stewart says in 2008, the Democratic Labour Party came to office to find 28,000 outstanding applications at the NHC. He says it's proof that both parties have tried to deal with the problem of housing, but acknowledges it's not one that can be solved permanently. Even as you solve a problem for one or two families or three families uh, uh, at a given time, there are scores of others behind wanting the same solution. And uh, in the context of scarce resources, the problem becomes more and more difficult, but we have to be empathetic, understanding, and do the best we can to bring some calm, some stability, and some dignity to the lives of people affected by an absence of stable housing. In the meantime, Housing Minister Dennis Kalman gave MPs an update on some of the NHC's projects. Mr. Kalman said most of the ongoing ones have been completed and allocation of the properties is advancing well. And now we are at Parchland, where 89 properties out of 117 have been allocated and we are in the process of completing the next 29 so that we can have a clean slate at Parchland also. We, as you know previously, we would have done Country Towers, we would have done Valerie, and we would have done Grotto. As it stands there, I'm told that just a, one more block with some minor work, and that will be all behind us. Mr. Kalman says the ministry is also concerned about agriculture on the island and is very careful about how it allocates land. In any country that allows all of its land, all of its land, to be used for housing and other things and not food, is a country that should really stop and think. And that is why, in becoming minister of housing, I also had to make a very critical decision on lands that was owned by the Spring Hall Estates are better owned by the BADMC because one has to be very careful. We, we have to understand and we will think, say it sooner rather than later that if we do not protect our food stock that we are going to feel every impact that occurs in the world. The resolution being debated surrounds land, which was the home of the old District E police station. It was first earmarked for tourism development by the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., but was later deemed unsuitable. While well, one opposition member of Parliament is charging that there continues to be major issues surrounding the functioning of the NHC. According to MP for St. James Central, Kerry Simmons, there are people who have been on the NHC's waiting list for over 25 years. There are people there with families who applied to National Housing Corporation when they got the first job at age 21. And at age 49 are still not in a position to have gotten relief for the National Housing Corporation. 
and that that means there is a systemic problem facing the corporation that intellects in this parliament have not been prepared to sit down and confront and wrestle to the ground, Mr. Speaker. That is the reality facing this, this um, constituency that I represent. St. Michael's Southeast MP Santia Bradshaw has called for a better system at the NHC to allocate houses. Calling for a different approach to governance, Ms. Bradshaw says the island's housing problems will not be solved unless parliamentarians understand that helping someone to acquire a home does not equate to a vote. I believe that there needs to be a needs assessment done within the National Housing Corporation to determine the needs of persons who are applying. It is not sufficient to send people into NHC and because they know the minister that they're able to get housing or because I write a letter that they're able to get housing. The, the, those days are gone. And we need to have a policy where people, where people have certainty in terms of knowing, okay, they, they're, they're applying, or they, they send in the application, and there's a time frame within which the, the responses are given. And the government minister thinks that Barbados is ripe for conversation on social issues, particularly housing. St. James South MP and Commerce Minister Donville Innes says the time has come to accept there are some services government can only continue to provide to the most vulnerable. He says among the discussions has to be how to teach young people the value of investing in and ownership of property. Let us start talking about how we can empower a new group of entrepreneurs in Barbados, a new class of owners in Barbados who can really and truly transform housing in Barbados, who can drive the cost of housing down. Let us have a conversation about how we can empower and encourage more of our citizens to feel that they can own a piece of the rock. Not to feel that they have to depend on a handout from anyone. Let us talk to our young people about investing and saving, saving and investing towards their future. Mr. Innes is also in favor of allowances on mortgage interest being reinstated, as well as the implementation of reverse mortgages to help the elderly who are living longer. The problem of homelessness in Barbados is growing to worrying degrees. This from opposition St. Thomas MP Cynthia Ford. Although she did not give figures, Ms. Ford believes homelessness is at the highest it has been in the last 30 years. The St. Thomas MP is also concerned about the plight of fire victims, most of whom are unable to find accommodation in the aftermath of fire. I know there are times when four and five houses are burnt. There are still families within the last five, six, ten years in St. Thomas who are squatting at neighbors and friends at the mercies of the churches and other community groups for them to survive. Because I do not expect that the welfare grant, the welfare department will be able to pay for housing facilities on a temporary basis for all of them. Member of Parliament for St. George North, Glenn Clark, says there is a catastrophe fund in place to assist people with housing. According to him, the fund was established under the previous Barbados Labour Party administration for emergency situations. Opportunities exist within this fund that can be used to help not only persons who, are, who have a flood or, who's, or a storm has washed out um, blow away of house. We need, Mr. Speaker, to be creative and how we use this fund to help those persons who are in need or have a problem with the landlord, have a problem finding homes because of fire. It was back to court for the 15-year-old Lester Vaughn female student who was remanded to the government industrial school in connection with the attack on a fellow schoolmate in May. When she appeared in court on June 8th, she pleaded not guilty to the offense of assault occasioning actual bodily harm. Yesterday, she was granted bail in the sum of $500 with one surety. She is to reappear in court on August 10th. As part of her bail conditions, she was placed on a 5 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew Monday to Friday and a full curfew during the weekend. The 12 semi-finalists for this year's Yellow Bashment Soka competition have been named. Bashment Soka Ambassador Shane DJ Rass Edwards made the announcement earlier today on 98.1 The One. Alter Ego, 
We have Time to Ben, Cooper Dan and Rhea Beer with Trouble. Beer Trouble, Gorg and Linsky with Sit Down Pan, Hardware with Pop Down, Lady Essence, Fluffy Gal Anthem, Marsville Gassy. with Gas It Up, of course, Mole with Simon Says, Skrilla with Wood, Snap Brandy with Ben Over and Ride, Stabby with Wakis, Swaggy, Bubble and Good Down, Versi and Joe Cloudy with okay. Up It. Congrats to the semi-finalists. Well, Mr. Edwards explains only six artists and one wild card will advance to the final based on public voting. From tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. until midnight each and every day, right up until Thursday, the 22nd of June, you can vote via WhatsApp and Facebook. WhatsApp number 248-1986. Facebook, search for Bashment Soka 246. Bashment Soka 246 on Facebook. You remember one vote per day per person. So you can vote every single day. Coming up, a local bartender reigns supreme in the region and a local charity seeing a fall off in donations. Stay with us. Yes is a beautiful word. It empowers us. It brings satisfaction. And since you earn up to 3% cash back on everyday purchases with the Scotiabank Gold MasterCard, that's a lot of satisfaction, a lot more often. Plus, you get a welcome bonus from the get-go. Scotiabank Gold MasterCard is the card that keeps on giving, so it's easier for you to create many more precious yes moments. Apply today. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with diabetes? If so, it is important that you know about Glucerna. Glucerna is a nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and contains carb steady, which helps minimize blood sugar spikes. Manage your diabetes with Glucerna. Glucerna, nutrition for people with diabetes, designed for you. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. Hello friends, this is Jeff Shepard inviting you to join us every Thursday from 6 to 7 on QFM for Nickels Bacon Inc. Manor. Always fresh. As Barbadians continue to anticipate the effect of increasing taxes following the budget, a local charity is foreseeing a fall off in donations. That's the view of Public Relations Officer of Cancer Support Services, Antoine Williams. Given that the organization is heavily dependent on charity, Mr. Williams says this is cause for concern. So we are responding and asking Corporate Barbados to assist. And Corporate Barbados has its own issues as far as maintaining its profit margins and so on. Then one will appreciate that you know, the reduction in support will come about. Mm -hmm. One can also appreciate that even the cost of purchasing items will also be a factor. So while um, at the executive level, we have not sat down and yet discussed it and looked at it in a very deep way, we are mindful that it will affect the work of the cancer support services. Cancer Support Services is currently preparing for its annual conference to be held on June 24th. Mr. Williams, who recently underwent treatment for colon cancer, still believes people have several misconceptions about the disease. There's a lot of education that's necessary. We're still, we're still ignorant, for want of a better word, as far as what cancer is all about. We're still ignorant as far as the various stages um, on learning that I was diagnosed with stage four. A lot of people say, well, you're going to die now. That's it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that. Stage four doesn't mean you're going to die. You can die at any point. It doesn't matter what stage your cancer is at. Stage four simply means that it has moved from one part, from the original location and it has spread to another part of the body. That's all it means. Yeah. A local doctor believes Barbadians should get screened early for cancers. 
G2 Nebnani made that plea at a regional medical fundraiser. His comments come as World Health Organization estimates suggest there'll be an increase in the number of cases of cancers in the future. Dr. Nebnani says early testing is one of the most effective methods to nip cancers in the bud. Early detection is caused, called screening. So similarly, we can screen for prostate cancer, we can screen for cervical cancer with a pap smear, for breast cancer with mammograms. So for prostate cancer, how we screen, we do two things. One of them is a blood test. The Medical Alert fundraiser was organized by Patricia Ramsey to help fund a missionary outreach in Mal to Malawi. While we are here, we are one, uh, we do one set of work, maybe a professional, and then when we go on the mission missionary field, we do many things, so we wear many hats. So we had that for two years. Medical Alert came about last year, and again, we are, re we are repeating it because of the um, people who were so enthused with what they heard and how it was presented, hence Medical Alert 2017. Many of the chronic diseases affecting Barbadians can be prevented or reversed. That's the belief of retired physician Dr. Maurice Smith. He says it only takes reprogramming our minds. In order to do this, Dr. Smith says people must first debunk some of the myths believed to be true over the years. As a gynecologist, I was told that you need to do a mammogram every year. I don't discover that the mammogram is the number one cause of breast cancer. We've been told that cholesterol is the real bugbear when it comes to heart disease. You may not appreciate this, but over 50% of people who die from a heart attack have normal cholesterol. It turns out that cholesterol is of itself not the problem. Noting that government needs $750 million to provide adequate health care, Dr. Smith suggests controlling these conditions could make a significant dent in spending in this area. According to Dr. Smith, most chronic diseases are a result of a buildup of inflammation over several years. When the patient comes to see me and there's a lump in the breast and we diagnose cancer of the breast, that did not happen overnight. These conditions on average take 8 to 15 years to develop. Hence the reason that you can prevent. And if you catch it early enough, you can revert. The finalists for this year's Craig Nurse Memorial Scholarship Award have been encouraged to give back to the disabilities movement in Barbados. This message from President of the Barbados Council for the Disabled and President of the Senate, Dr. Senator Carrie Ann Eiffel. She was speaking during the awards ceremony where she presented the winner of the scholarship, Janelle Knight, and first runner-up, Gabriella Bovell niles with their checks. Senator Eiffel urged them to remember to give back. You are at the point of your lives where you are pursuing your academics. This is wonderful. This is great. When that is over, do not forget to give back to others. The disabilities movement in Barbados needs all the support and encouragement it can get. And brilliant young minds like the two of you are a part of the resource that we need to tap into. Ms. Bovell Niles, an amputee since 2015, studies psychology and sociology at the University of the West Indies, while Ms. Knight, who was diagnosed as deaf in one ear at the age of two, studies medicine also at the University of the West Indies. She says the scholarship is about more than just money. It has really widened my perspective on disabilities as a whole. Anyone that knows me would say I'm relatively normal because I have never allowed my disability to hold me back. This scholarship has made me proud of my journey. So here I say thank you to Craig Nurse for the opportunity and to Caribbean Catalyst for continuing throughout the years to keep his legacy alive. 12 of the country's youth identified as at risk have benefited from the first Barbados installment of the Princess Trust program. It came to an end yesterday at the St. Lawrence Primary School.
The Royal Barbados Police Force partnered with the Prince's Trust International Charity to facilitate the 12-week program here in Barbados. Team manager of the program, Inspector Roland Cobbler, says it's a personal development program aimed at assisting at-risk young people between the ages of 16 and 25. It can be described as being a significant aspect taking into consideration that it provides the Royal Barbados Police Force with a strategy for engaging our youth. The importance of such a program cannot be overemphasized since this is the age range which young people have been identified as being more predisposed for becoming involved in antisocial behavior. Inspector Cobbler says the program broadens the horizons of its participants. The program is designed to help these young persons achieve an accredited qualification, complete activities to develop their English and math skills, uncover previous hidden talent and recognize their own strengths and ability, both boost self-confidence and motivation, improve personal skills such as communication and teamwork, and assist them in connecting closely with the community through various community projects. Well, one of those community projects is the restoration of the reception classroom at St. Lawrence Primary. Team leader Constable Cornelia Daniels says the participants gave of their best. They came, they gave up their best, they came every day, found something to do, they looked around, they said they needed some curtains, we went, we bought some curtains, we had somebody make them, then they came in and placed them. We also went to, we also bought some bookshelves, they put together the bookshelves and installed them there on their own. Okay, we then undertook the task of Packing away, because it was disorganized when we came, packing away, cleaning up, that sort of thing. And then we went round to the front of the building where we would have gotten some plants and planted a nice little, of, um, a nice garden of Barbados, Pride of Barbados. Two of those participants were grateful for the experience. When they came here, I didn't know anybody. So when the team leaders talk to us and say that there's nothing to be afraid about or anything, then my confidence just went shooting. So I met and I talked to everybody, you know me and their friends and stuff. The program is pretty helpful because it has some people that came and was up in a carnival, but then when they came to this program, they come out. So it was, it's nice. We learn at the program, we do a hike, which was, was the first two weeks of the hike. We hike from um, Bath St. John to Fort Hill. After the hike, we camp up there. So basically what it is, the hike, when we camp, we had set up tents. New experience in me, I never set up a tent before, so that was a great experience. The 40-year program was started in England by Prince Charles, son of Queen Elizabeth II. This is the first year the program was held outside of the UK. The Barbados leg of the exercise trade wins has just concluded and last night the military personnel involved got a taste of Barbados. At the Oystens Bay Garden, hundreds of participants from around the world were treated to the grilled fish for which the area is well known, along with a wide section of selection of other foods. Entertainment was a major part of the celebrations and Shanta Prince headlined an all Barbadian cast. Veteran band leader Betty West provided a glimpse of what her band has to offer this year, showcasing models and dancers on stage. For me, this has been a privilege, and um, I wish they would often have more things like this in Barbados. It has been great. Not only my show, but the presentation of the dancers, and, and everything was very, very, very exciting. It's the popular band leader's 26th festival and she's pumped up for Crop Over 2017. Her theme is, this is my island. Last year I got a few prizes, but this year I'm coming to take it all. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to make Barbados proud and all of my overseas people. This year, as I said before, the name of my band is Welcome to My Island and I'm welcoming all the people who have, I should say the visitors, from the various part of the world who has been supporting us over the year and especially now for Crop Over. After the break, we'll take a look at stories making headlines across our region. Carrie Festa for you. Carrie Festa 
for me. Gary Fester 13 Barbados. Gary Fester for you. Gary Fester for me. Gary Fester 13 Barbados. Over the years, since the 70s, they've come together in the Caribbean. Talented artists inspire creativity. Every territory exploded culturally. Gary Festa for you, Gary Festa for me, Gary Festa 13 for everybody. Mutual heritage, regional unity. Gary Festa 13 Barbados. August 17th to 27th. Visit GaryFesta.net. Are you positive? You are negative. H I V free. Are you positive? You are negative. Get tested and see. Are you positive? You are negative. Are you okay? Are you positive? You are negative. Get tested today. Live up the Caribbean Media Alliance in association with Scotiabank, PANCAP, and local ministries and departments of health are for the 10th anniversary of Regional Testing Day providing free HIV testing and counselling. Visit us online at iliveup.info for a schedule and full list of testing sites. Shouldn't you know your status? Live up for those you love, protect, and respect. Come on, get tested. Are you positive? Investigations are now on hold into an alleged plot to assassinate Guyana's president. More in this report. Police have indicated that the investigation into the alleged plot to assassinate President David Granger has been put on hold because investigators can't seem to locate the mastermind so that a confrontation can be done between the mastermind and the hired assassin. But... Nightly News at the weekend spoke with the man who was allegedly approached to take out the president. He told us that it's far from the truth since he sees the mastermind every day. This was not done since every time I go there like five times. But they keep claiming that he's not in the country. This is what they're telling me, but I'm his neighbor. I'm seeing them every day going in and coming out, going in and coming out. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was told to me from the police. I, w I was also told by the police that Whatever message or whatever report they got from the telephone company, they are the police, they could put in what they want, they could take out what they want. They understand, so up to them, whatever information they give the legal advisor, this is what the information they can get. The privately owned Stabrook News quoted a police source as saying that it was the police legal advisor who had recommended that the investigation be placed on hold pending the confrontation. Tell me exactly the last time you saw the man we were speaking about here. Last night. Probably about 12.30. Coming in to his house last night. When, when, whenever you see him, do you inform the police? The police don't take no calls from me. All they say, sir, whenever we need you, we're going to call you. Whenever we need you, we're going to call you. He's accusing the police of buying time to sweep the investigation under the carpet. Barbados can boast of having the best bartender and chefs in the region. This after, the Barbados team was declared the Regional National Team of the Year in the recently concluded Taste of the Caribbean competition held in Miami. The team members were publicly hailed at a cocktail reception held at the Mount Gay Visitor Center. Bartender Ryan Addison was the toast of his colleagues and teammates at the special cocktail reception. He won gold in the Caribbean Bartender of the Year category and also emerged as its overall winner. Mr. Addison caught the best round drink title. Ryan, of course, is, is lucky here to be, uh, to experiment. He can experiment every day with all the visitors that we have here. So it's true that uh, you can adjust your recipe, you can be more creative. And each time I'm seeing you now, uh, uh, almost nine years here, so I, I'm seeing you evolving. And every year you're, you're more and more creative. Ryan refused to believe that he did well enough in any of the three drinks. This reminded me of myself, and the funny thing about it is, is that I always tell Ryan that he is one of four parts, because I believe he's one part Rohan Hackshaw, who is one of my former trainees, one part Philip Antoine, another one of my trainees, one part myself, because of how, because of his attitude towards the cocktails and the attitude towards the competition, and one part himself, the person that always beats up himself after every single co cocktail that he does. 
winning those titles was one of his goals. Coming into this year, I was actually quite hungry. I, I felt uh, kind of bad last year that I only got the gold medal, I didn't cop the entire prize. But um, the team actually comforted me by saying, you know, I didn't do too bad, goal, they were satisfied with the goal. I wasn't. So this year, I made up in my mind that the cocktails I was going to take should have been good enough that it should get me the prize. Many of his cocktails were uniquely Barbadian. And I had three very solid cocktails. Uh, one cleverly crafted cocktail called Tea and Tea on Tea at Tea, and it was served with a tea time biscuit. So uh, that was my non-alcoholic uh, cocktail. The rum cocktail was basically a twist on my favorite cocktail, the Negroni, and I infused Montgomery pure silver rum with grapefruit skin, Moby, a shrub made from coriander and bay leaf, and cola tonic. And that gave the same flavors that we got in the Negroni, which is made from gin, campari, and vermouth. So I took all local ingredients and replicated something from my international stage. Team manager, Chef Henderson Butcher, praised the team's efforts. The guys worked really, really hard in the beginning, of this year, we were getting a lot of excuses and one day decided, look, don't want to hear the excuses anymore because if you're going to tell me, chef, sorry, but I could have, if you're going to say that to me, no, it means that you know to correct it before you actually get to the final position. So therefore, if you have an excuse here in Barbados, you will have excuses in Miami. So our mantra was really no excuses. And we decided not to take any prisoners. And we actually went to Miami we took absolutely no prisoners. Ryan will not be competing in that series contest. However, he will take on a new role as a team coach. Ryan Phillips, CBC News. A peek into the world of sports is just ahead, but before we get there, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance.